my um, pastor recently, uh, last Sunday, uh, preached about a whole sermon on hell. <clears throat> so it kind of got me in the mood to uh, teach on that. Um, you know, some people, they hear a lie, something that's not true, and it gets repeated over and over. And it's sad when that happens in the church to people who've been going to church for a while. But um, the whole this whole thing that Jesus didn't, he only preached hell to the Pharisees. That, that is such nonsense. Just read the New Testament. I mean, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I, I'm, it's annoying when people have been going to church for a while and, and say that, that Jesus did not only preach hell to the Pharisees. Um, Jesus said hell was weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies, where the fire is never quenched. Jesus said it's eternal punishment and outer darkness. Um, the Revelation 14.11 says the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Um, in Matthew 5.29-30, to 30, Jesus said, If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your, right, uh, if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. I don't know about <clears throat> every sect of Judaism, but there are some Jews that believe in hell because um, you have uh, Daniel 12.2. It says, uh, many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Um, you know, when people say, well, I don't want to believe that. I believe that God is loving. Uh, you know, and we, we should ask them, why do you believe God is loving? And if they say, well, if they say the Bible says so, and that's true. The Bible does say that. God is love. But, um... We can't pick and choose. And God has multiple attributes. He's loving, he's just, he's wrathful. And um, Nahum chapter 1 verse 2, it says, A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Uh, Isaiah 13 9 says, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, a book coming out. Someone who's an enemy of the Christian faith is going to use Luke 16, uh, misusing it. And no, Luke 16 does not teach works for salvation. If you want to isolate certain parts of the Bible and build doctrine from there without giving regard to context and not taking the whole Bible into account, then you're going to be a mess. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, Jesus' uh, parable in Luke 16, verses 19 to 31, Jesus said, Now there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day, and a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate covered with sores and longing to be fed with crumbs, which were falling from the rich man's table besides. Even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He said, Abraham, uh, far, far away in Lazarus, Lazarus, in his bosom, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send me Lazarus, so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus bad things, but now he is being comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed, so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able, and, no, and that none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, that you send 
you sent him to my father's house for I am for I have five brothers in order that he uh, he may warn them so that they so that they will not also come to this place of torment but Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them but he said no father Abraham but if someone goes to them from the dead they will repent but he said to him if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. So Jesus is very clear that hell is a place of eternal suffering, torment, it's agony. Um, you will be given a spiritual body. I, I, I posted something teaching on hell. Uh, I, po I posted it on Facebook, um, and it's, I'll just read, it's not too long. Uh, at, you know, it's expounding off of um, the you know, teaching of what the Bible says about hell. In hell, you will be saturated by its incompassionate flames, engulfed in a lake of fire and brimstone. Misery will cling to you, for dear life and depression will be your closest companion. After billions and billions of centuries, your regrets will still be there to mentally torture you because you will be trapped with your thoughts in outer darkness and they will never leave your mind. Your spiritual body will be in the state of destruction, but it will, not, it will never actually dissolve, but forever remain in that state. God will not, will not even have enough mercy on you to give you any relief for your searing agony for one fraction of a second. They will suffer extreme torment with constant pain, with constant regret. They will, be, they will be fully aware and conscious of what is happening to them and why they are suffering. Hell is a whole world of nothing but pure and unadulterated horrific suffering, misery, loneliness, despair, crying, and more agony and pain than anything that this world has to offer by far where their sufferings will be unrelenting and everlasting. That's what will happen to everyone who does not repent of their sins, all who deny Jesus as the Lord of their lives. And uh, the Bible is clear. God's word tells us that when someone does not want to um, accept God's word, it's because they love their sin and they want to suppress the truth. That, that's it's a heart problem. That's the, the core problem. That's that's it. They love their sin. They don't want to believe and they want to suppress the truth. We are commanded to um, live holy. Jesus said in John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Um, and if we believe that Jesus died for our sins, we, we repent of our sins uh, we believe on faith alone. He uh, he was he was killed on the cross. He resurrected. And uh, if we believe him on faith, confess with our mouth, believe in our hearts, repent of our sins, and uh, we will be saved. Um, some people have the idea that, like Jesus, as long as you just believe intellectually that he exists. And that is not the biblical gospel. It's not this easy beliefism thing that many people um, think. Because, I mean, in Matthew 10, 34 to 38, Jesus said, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I came to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be the members of his household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Um, that's Matthew 10, 34 to 38. The Bible is clear about sin, and, and yes, both Testaments, old and new, says that homosexuality is a sin. And, um, you know, we have, th there's numerous verses. Uh, when people say sin, uh, this younger generation, they, you know, they're this. We used to live in a in a culture where more people 
had more of a background of Christianity, and that's that's really not the case as much anymore. Um, so uh, you know, the Bible uh, set, tells us what you know sin is. Um, in Galatians five nineteen to twenty one, and there's other places other than this to talk about other sins, but. Uh, Galatians 5, 19 and 21 says the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, it speaks about uh, sexual immorality. Um, so we should be, we should get more familiar with the scriptures because the Bible says that God commands all men to repent and we're commanded to live holy the way that God wants us to live. And if someone is truly regenerated by the spirit of God, um, they become a new person from the inside and it would be it, it will be God who is working in that person to resist sin. Um, it's not that we're saved by works. We are not saved by works. It's a faith alone, uh, believing on Jesus. But it is not this uh, just believe in his existence and like Jesus is a rabbit's foot and that sort of thing. Um, that is a, a great misunderstanding of the scriptures. Um, that nowhere does the Bible teach that. So. I uh, hope that this was uh, educational for um, people out there um, because there is a hell. Jesus talked about hell more than heaven. And Jesus taught that the majority of people are going to go there. And uh, that's why Christians give the gospel to people. So because we don't want to see uh, people go to hell. We're commanded to give the gospel to people.